Hi everyone. Today, let's talk about money. It's a topic that we all love to talk about, right? Yes, we do. We all love to talk about money. We all love to have money. Don't you love to have money? I certainly love to have money. So we want. I want us to talk about some of the ways that we can change our attitude towards money so that we can develop a more positive relationship with money in our lives. A lot of us don't have positive relationships with money we want it and we need it to live and to enjoy life but we don't respect it we associate it with negativity and this needs to stop this needs to change right so let's look at some of the negative attitudes that we have and how we can change those attitudes so that we can have a better relationship with money so this is part one there's going to be a part two video we're going to look at 17 points 17 different points that we can have to change our relationship with money and make it more positive all right the first thing you can do in terms of changing your relationship with money is to, is to believe that you deserve to have it. You must believe that you deserve to have money. A lot of times we're tempted to feel that, oh, those other persons, those other persons deserve to have it. If somebody comes to you and even mention money, the first thing you want to say is, do I look well in the old days? You would say something like, Who do you think I am, Rockefeller? Because you know that those were the, the rich guys in those days. Uh, more recently, who do you think I am, Donald Trump? Who do you think I am, um, Elon Musk? Who do you think I am? And uh, we can name out all the big names who we associate with money, and we're basically saying, I'm not that guy, I'm not that lady. Why are you coming to me for money? What you're subconsciously saying is. I'm not associated with wealth and you know what wealth will not find you wealth wealth will dissociate itself with you so you must first believe that you deserve to have it don't think that there is any virtue in poverty there is no virtue in poverty there is virtue in wealth stop associating money with negativity or to say that money is the root of all evil so that's number one believe that you deserve to have money when you see money have a smile on your face don't be envious of others who have it but think of it in a positive light number two stop telling your children that you can't afford it and that you are poor even if you are, even if you can't afford it. This is, this is something that a lot of us, we just keep saying. If somebody is selling you something, somebody is showing you something, somebody is offering, let's do this, let's do that. The first thing come to your mind is, I'm poor. Why, why are you even coming to me? Right? Or I can't afford it. If you get into that habit of always telling your children, especially that we are poor we can't afford that. We can't buy this. We can't buy that. At least once in a while, treat yourself and treat your kids to something nice, something expensive. Let them be used to it. You know, as I always tell myself, I try to let my children have some experiences. Um, take them to the North Coast, even if you have to save up for it, no matter how long you have to save up for it. Take them to the North Coast, to, to this um, resort. Take them on a trip somewhere. Treat them to a dinner at a fancy restaurant. 
don't let your children be thinking that the only way they can have these things is if they, um, as soon as they are able to get with someone who is going to give it to you, especially your girls. This goes for male, males and females, but especially your girls. You be the one to introduce them to luxury. You be the one to carry them um, on a trip. You be the one to take them to a, a restaurant on their birthday, on a special day, take them out. Give them a, an expensive gift, no matter how you have to save for it. Don't let them think that they're going to have to um, give themselves to someone else, find a man before they can experience these kinds of things. Um, I have a student and every time something comes up, like we're going on a school trip, the first thing that student will say is, my mother is poor, my mother can't afford it. And this is because this is something that his mom is always telling him. Next time I saw his mom, I said, listen to me, even if you don't have the money, don't frame it in that way. Say, maybe I'll see what can happen or something else. But don't be always pushing in the child's head. We are poor. We can't afford it because guess what? You are listening to yourself. Your subconscious is listening to you and your subconscious will play out exactly what you tell it. So you keep telling it that you are poor, you can't afford it, guess what? You will always not be able to afford it, right? So that's the second thing. Stop telling your children that they are poor and they, that you can't afford it. Number three, you must always try to think of generational wealth. And if you come from a family that has for generations been struggling to eke out an existence, Tell yourself that you are going to be the one to change that. And don't just tell yourself that. Put things in place. Do action to ensure that you're the one who breaks that generational curse and you are the one who starts the generational wealth. Start a business that you're going to grow so that eventually your children can take over and build on that, build on that, build on that. That's generational wealth. You start it and generations to come will build on it so that it will be something tangible. And after a while, couple generations, you know, it will be something substantial. While you're doing that, of course, you're building these positive values in your children so they're not just going to come and feel that, oh, mommy did this, daddy did this, so now I can just relax and um, just rely on what mommy and daddy did and I don't have to do anything for myself. No. While you're doing that, you're letting them come and help out in the shop. Let them understand all the work that went into building what you have and so they can appreciate it, right? Number five. You must always have the attitude of, listen, I don't want what's yours. You can't have what's mine. Don't envy nobody for what they have. You don't know how they got it. Some of them, there is such a thing as dirty money. So even though I'm telling you, listen, have a positive attitude towards money. Yeah, there is blood money. There is dirty money and you should not associate with that. You see people have their things. You don't know how they got it. Don't envy them for it, right? Focus on what you are building. Work on your thing in your corner and don't want what the other person has. And don't feel that you should show off on other people so that they will envy you, right? So you don't want to envy anybody and you don't want anybody envying you for what you are. You, you don't put yourself in the way because people will see you and yeah, they might envy you, but it's not because of you putting yourself out there, showing yourself up. No, we're not about that. We're all about doing the work in your corner, right? Doing the work in your corner to protect what you have secure your bag as we put it secure your bag and focus on your bag all right number six 
be willing to put in the effort that is required. Be willing to put in the effort. A lot of times we see you, you might want something. You tell yourself, yeah, that's a good thing to have, or I want to go to that place, or I want to set up my business. You know, a lot of people start business and within a couple of months or even a year, they don't see anything turning over and they're just ready to, to, to give up. That's not how it goes. A business takes time. A business takes effort. A business takes research. A business takes planning. So be, be willing to put in that effort, especially in the initial stages. It takes even more work from you. It takes even more sacrifice. Humble yourself. Be someone's apprentice. Nothing is wrong with being an apprentice. Nothing is wrong in offering your time in exchange for some skill. Offering your time in exchange for some work experience that you can then build on. A lot of us were too humble to start from scratch. We want to just start and immediately make this huge profit or immediately go to the top. That's not how it works. If you want to build a business, you're, you want to be an entrepreneur, you need to understand this is going to take time, effort, study. Uh, you have to, to hone those skills. If you, if you have to go be an apprentice under someone who has the expertise so that you can learn the expertise, do it. If it's just a little pittance they're going to give you um, while you're, you're doing that, humble yourself and do it you can't start and immediately want to go to the top if it comes too easy you're going to lose it easily and you yourself are not going to appreciate it you have to be willing to put in the effort you have to be willing to do your research regarding the market for the different um field that the business is in right you have to hone the skill this is very important. Number seven, you have to invest in productive ventures, right? If you're coming to some money, especially if it's unexpected money, a relative give you an inheritance, um, you win a prize, some money as a prize, or even if it's money that you have decided, all right, from my salary or from my allowance, I'm going to put aside X amount and invest it. Of course, again, you're going to do your research to make sure that this is a productive investment that is liable to give you a return, but make some kind of investment for the future. The investment is something where you're going to put your money aside to make a profit in the future so you must be willing to or you must be able to go without that money for a little while whether you're going to invest it in your bank account put it in a fixed deposit or you're going to go on the stock market do some research get some advice from people who know the market who know that and put aside some money put some savings down, some investment for a rainy day, right? You must have, I always say, you must have, in terms of money, enough to use, enough to keep, and enough to share, right? You must have enough to use, enough to keep, and enough to share. Number eight, quit the whole heap of partying and flaunting and flossing and the unnecessary spending. The unnecessary spending. Sometimes when you look, you know, you were to sit down for the month and look at all the spending that you did, you'd realize that, hey, a lot of this was really unnecessary. I didn't have to buy this. I didn't have to, I could have walked where I took a, a taxi. I could have walked and gotten some exercise where I bought that extra cup of coffee, I could have gone without it. Um, some of us just party too much. And we are told, here's a big mistake that a lot of people are told that in your 20s, you should be frolicking, you should be partying, you should be, quote unquote, enjoying life. Your 20s 
are actually for planning and laying a, a firm foundation for life. Twenties is, are not for squandering and, and, and just wasting your time and wasting your health also. A lot of people think they can just waste their health because it is indefinite. Health is not indefinite. You have to actually care for yourself. And the, the whole heap of partying and binge drinking and eating all kind of junk food, a lot of fast food. The young people especially do these things. And then they reach 30 and they, they, they look back and say, what have I done? What do I have to show? They don't own any assets. They, they barely own even their own health. So be very careful as you, you come into adulthood, 18, 19, going into 20s, you're in your 20s, start saving from now, take your education very seriously. That is what you're going to stand on for the rest of your life. That's what you're going, that's your earning power, right? Number nine, the gambling and the, the lottery thing, a lot of persons invest too much in chance that's putting all your hope on chance you spend this money you're losing money some people gamble every single day of their life and they're just looking at it oh, oh it's just a twenty dollar or it's just a hundred dollar or it's just a thousand dollar these things add up um, and if you were supposed to look back at all the years that you spent gambling putting this twenty dollar ten dollar twenty dollar ten dollar you'd be amazed if you had saved that or if you had invested that, you'd be shocked as to how much money you actually have. What are the chances of you winning the lottery? What are the chances of you even winning some of the smaller um, um, gambling? How much have you won compared to how much you have had to put in? Sit down one of these days and do the comparison, and you will see. You're, you are the one who are losing right so cut out the gambling save that money number 10 and we're going to wrap up this video on number 10 and you're going to look for a part two where we're going to look at seven more ways that we can change our attitude towards money so that money can start flowing into our lives so number 10 stop associating money with evil stop associating rich people with snobbery stop associating wealth with a particular race or a particular class of people yes wealth will put you in a, a certain class but don't feel like because you were born outside of that class class that you don't have any right to want to join that class right you absolutely can change your class you can change your fortune you just have to be willing to work for it and if you associate wealth with evil if all you say is oh money is the root of all evil you know what money is not going to find you money is an entity money is a it, Everything on this earth has spirit, has vibration. You have to vibrate on the same frequency of the things that you want to attract to you. If you are putting it out there that you think money is evil and the people who have money are evil, it's either you're saying and you want it, so it's either you're saying, well, you too are evil and when you get it, you will behave like the same people who you're talking about, right? Or you're basically telling money, listen, Avoid me, don't find me if I am good. So make up your mind, right? Money, like everything else on this earth, is neutral, or I should say more precisely, money, like everything else on this earth, is dual. There's a duality to nature, right? You can use it for good, you can use it for evil. It can bring good into your life, it can bring evil into your life. It all depends on your outlook. It depends on how you intend to procure it. If you're going to use evil means to get it, then certainly it will bring evil and wickedness into your life. 
and attract those kind of people coming after it into your life. Tell yourself that money has a potential to do good in your life and in the world. You're going to get it by honest means, clean, transparent, legal means. And when you have it, you're going to use it for the betterment of yourself, your family, your friends, and the wider society. And you're going to attract the clean money. There is dirty money, blood money. There is clean money, clean, fresh, nice money. As the song said, fresh cash, fresh cash, clean cash. That's the kind you want in your life because you have fresh, clean things to do with it. So look out for part two, and we're going to talk about some other ways that we can have more positive attitudes towards money. <laughs>